Hi, second grade. My name is Miss Emmeline Leiden, and I'm your teaching artist in the PACE Arts Program in Lafayette, Louisiana. I'm here to help you learn the arts and also classroom curriculum. You may be watching from your classroom with your classmates, and if you have any questions during this lesson, please raise your hand and ask your teacher. You may be watching from home, and I'm sure you have somebody at home that you can also ask questions to. Just remember, you can always pause the video and get to the bottom of that question before we move on. Today we're going to continue to learn about matter in our science class. And in this unit, you've already learned that matter is everything around you. It is anything that has mass and takes up space. You also learned that there are three states or kinds of matter. Can you think of them real quick? And can you say them with me now? Solid, liquid, and gas. Good. We're going to talk about the three kinds of matter and some properties to describe different matter. And then we're going to create something to draw on and tell a story about what we have learned today. Today we're going to look at how matter can change to create something new. And we're going to make something out of a regular, everyday thing. You'll see what in a second. And we're going to draw a picture to illustrate our understanding of matter. First, let's stand up and do a scavenger hunt around the classroom or at home. We're not going to be moving around the classroom, but we'll use our eyes to look around for three states of matter. So go ahead and stand behind your chair and put your hands on your chair and that's your first clue. Can you find something that is a solid state of matter? Do you have your hands on it right now? Yeah, a chair is a great example of something solid. Can you find another thing in your classroom that is solid? Look to the right. Look to the left, look in your desk, ask yourself, what does it mean if it is solid? Yes, find a couple more things. Solid is things you can touch and feel. Uh, let's see, a pencil, a pen, a book. Good job. Now let's look for a, um, a liquid. So we might not necessarily have this in the room itself, quite possibly though, but what would a liquid be? Anything that we can pour into something. Maybe you have a bottle of water. Yeah. Or water from the water fountain. What do you wash your hands with? It's a liquid because it can move, right? Okay, the third state of matter. Can you find something around your classroom that is a gas? Now, gas is much harder because it's hard to see, right? But let's take a deep breath in and breathe out. There's a clue right there. Yeah, we just breathed in oxygen and that is a gas and it helps us stay alive. All right, great job. If we think about gas for one more second, can we think about where else we could see that? Miss Melissa talked to you about pouring liquid into a pot, putting the pot on the stove, raising the temperature, and then that water starts to boil, and what comes out of that pot? Steam, yes, steam is a gas. We just breathed in, so we can't see it, but we know we have oxygen in the air. And the next thing I want you to think about, because it will apply eventually to our art project, is when you put something inside something, the gas will fill up the container that it's in. The container being solid, right? So sometimes we can think about gas easier if we Pretend it's inside a container. So, hmm, let's think of something that has air or something inside it. Now, I think maybe you see one on the 
playground and it can bounce around. A basketball. What about something that doesn't have much life in it, but when you fill it with helium, it can float away. And are you starting to think of the word? It's something that you might get at your birthday as a celebration. Yeah, a balloon. Now we can see the matter, the balloon. It's a object, right? Can you envision this balloon? Let's practice our imagination skills. The outside of the balloon we can feel and we can kind of bend it, but guess what? It's not flowing, so it would be a solid. It's staying together, but we can also put helium inside it. And since you're standing up, right, let's do this as a movement exercise. Put your hands together and then pretend that we put helium inside. The balloon gets bigger and bigger and bigger until it can float away. Helium likes to float, right? All right. Go ahead and let's float our hands up. Float our hands down. One more time. And let's breathe in while we float like a balloon away. Breathe in. And breathe out. Good job. Have a seat. All right. We've talked about different states of matter. Let's use some examples and do kind of like a flashcard in our mind of, I'm going to say some words and you're going to whisper if you think it is a gas, a solid, or a liquid. Ready? First one. Um, cheese. Can you touch it? Can you feel it? Yes, solid. Paint. Hmm. Does paint pour? Does it drip? What would paint be? Yes, a liquid. How about the air inside of a tire? Inside the tire. Yes, that would be a gas. What about gasoline? Yeah, gasoline flows, even though it has the similar word in it, actual gas is different than gasoline. Gasoline flows, so it would be a liquid. How about an airplane? You can get inside an airplane, you can touch an airplane, yes, that would be a solid. What about orange juice? Hmm. Yep, you can pour it into a glass, you can drink it, and it goes down to your belly. What would orange juice be? A liquid. Nice. And one more. How about helium? Coming back to that balloon, what is helium now? Yes, it is a gas. Okay. I also brought some things to show you. Now that we've identified the three states of matter a little bit more, I want to show you something. So when we change elements of matter, we can still use them in terms of recycling, in terms of creating something new out of that, okay? So what I brought you today is recycled paper. Okay, we use paper all the time, but what if you broke it up and you changed it and you added a little bit of liquid to the solid, you would create a pulp, right? And this is actually a new, a brand new shape out of the pulp of paper that's been mixed with water and we have created a tool or a functional thing that we can put eggs in and it's all recycled paper and the color of it makes me think it might be even more like have you ever seen a newspaper yeah recycling that now here's another piece that is recycled paper okay so when you do that you just crunch it up and you're putting it you're mixing it with a liquid 
and you're creating kind of a liquidy thing and then you let the liquid dry out and it creates a brand new something, a brand new solid out of that paper, okay? So I want you to just start thinking about those concepts of creating something new using other elements of matter. In this case, it was liquid. Here is something that we use all the time, right? And we can light a flame inside. So we see this, we can touch it, we can hold it. It's not pouring, it's not moving, right? So this would be a solid, yes. But when we add other elements to this wax, beeswax, so we put the flame in the middle and we light this on fire, the heat, the temperature changes, and this solid will eventually melt and become what? Something that flows away and moves. What does it become? A liquid, okay? So this is an example of a liquid drying into a solid. And then when we heat it up with our temperature, it becomes a liquid again. So it's states of matter that are changing. Isn't that pretty cool? Can you think of other states of matter that change? I think Miss Melissa showed you about ice cubes and popsicles. Those are two fun things. And we know that that's taking water, also using temperature change by getting cold, cold, cold. The water becomes a solid and then it becomes a piece of ice and it can go back and forth, solid to liquid to gas, gas to liquid to solid. It's all connected. My other example, now this is something I really love. This is made of glass, but it's not what you normally see, okay? This is a piece of art. So when we're talking in terms of matter and we're talking in terms of science, when you understand the properties of something, when you understand what it's made of, how to feel it, so this is glass, so we're starting to understand the properties of that, we then can understand how to make art from the property, right? Glass melts with a high temperature and then it becomes a liquid and then you can reform it then you bring the temperature back down and you have something as cool as this. Take a look. And now that it's cooled back down, it's nice and heavy and it is a solid again. All right, so we're going to do a concept kind of like this, but not with glass and high temperature. We are going to make a book and we're going to use one piece of paper to make that book so for now, the supplies that you'll need is one piece of white paper and one way to glue, whether it's Elmer's glue, which is, we now know it's a liquid, right? Or whether it's a glue stick, okay? You can take either one of those glue options and get one piece of blank paper. I will meet you back at the art table to show you how to make your own personal mini book. All right, now that we understand the properties of different parts of matter, we can create something new. We can feel this piece of paper. We can bend this piece of paper. And we can cut this piece of paper. So you have your piece of paper in front of you. Let's make a brand new thing out of that. It's gonna look like this. And you're gonna be able to put your name on the front. We're gonna have some pictures inside. And it has a spine of the book, just like a regular book, and you can turn the pages. You can make as many books as you want, and you can even start writing your own stories in them. So you take your piece of paper and you fold it in half. I'm just gonna show you, my piece of paper is a little bit bigger than yours, so my book's gonna be bigger than yours. But all you have to do is take your piece of paper, take the top corner, and reach it over to the other corner, bottom corner, 
touching the bottom. So two corners touching before we hold the edge and push the papers together. And I kind of push to the top and then I use my hand flat and I inch it down little by little, kind of like an inchworm, and I press the paper together to get a good fold. That's what I want you to do with your piece of paper. Now, in the next step is to cut, okay? Where we see the line. But if you want to, you can take a pencil and you can draw down the line, down the fold or the crease of the paper so that you can see exactly where you want to cut. You can do that if you want, but you don't have to. If you're feeling pretty comfortable with your cutting skills, then all you have to do next is open your piece of paper and we're gonna cut right down the middle by using our scissors and holding the paper steady, cut down the middle. Now what you're doing is you're changing the property of this big piece of paper and you're turning it into a smaller piece of paper. Okay, good. Now you take each of these two pieces of paper and you fold both of them. So let's put one piece of paper beside away. Turn tall, turn it lengthwise, and let's fold it again where we get the corners to match up. And yes, I have one line of black, but don't pay any attention to that. Just match your corners. Your piece of paper is foldable, press the edges down, and we're making it smaller and smaller and smaller until we have a really cool book. Now, just to understand how we're incorporating all of the paper and we're changing the properties of all of the paper, let's take this folded part and put it aside just for a second. Get the other piece of paper that you had, the one that you just cut in half, and take corner to corner and fold it over and match your corners together and hold it tight and press down, okay? So we're just experimenting and playing with changing the properties of something to create something new. So now we have two of these and it's doable to put them like this, but guess what? We can get so many more pages in our book if we keep folding. Let's make it even smaller, okay? So how do we make it smaller? You open it back up and we're gonna cut where we see the line. Once again, if you want a guide, you can take your marker and you can draw. Actually, you have a pencil, right? I'm showing you with the marker, but you have a pencil. Draw down the center line so that you can see it when you pick up your paper. And I'm gonna give you a second to cut down the line, cutting our solid piece of paper into a smaller piece. Good. Now we've doubled, we've duplicated. We have our other fold and our other piece of paper. So pick up the second one, draw your line, and Cut down the line. We're making this smaller and smaller and smaller. We're turning a solid piece of paper into something new, repurposing it, recycling it into something new. How many pieces do you have now? Four? Good. Okay. So your miniature book is gonna be this size. I used a bigger piece of paper, so it's this size, right? But what you're gonna do with your four pieces of paper, one, two, three, four, is you're gonna fold them all in half, just like this, separately, okay? So if you wanna move them aside, put your piece of paper down and match the corners. 
fold in half. Paper number one, match the corners. You're getting really good at folding now. Good, and put it aside. Take paper number two, fold it in half, match the corners. It's a little bit smaller, so it might be harder to hold now. Good, match the corners, press the fold. Beautiful. Paper number three. Fold, match the corners. Press down. And paper number four, the fourth part of the book. Fold it, match the corners, and press it down. All right, we now have four pieces of paper. One, two, three, and four. Let's take each one, put a paper inside the other paper and glue it down like this. Open up your first piece of paper. This is how we're reconstructing our single solid piece of paper. So this is the art project and we're gonna talk once again about states of matter and we're gonna put it in our book. All right, take another side of that paper. One side's folded, one side has two corners. So you pick up the side with the two corners, you put the fold into the center where you put the glue, fold it over, good. And now we press again where we press down where the glue is. Good. And this is gonna be putting papers inside each time. It's a little bit easier than putting papers outside. So we're gonna go to the very center, put some glue in the very center, and we're stacking this paper to make a book. How is your glue? Is it working better than mine? Good. Okay, put the glue right in the middle and we know we can stack. We're gonna fold, put the fold inside right in there and fold your book around it. Press, press, press. Now because glue, the glue is still wet, it is in liquid form, meaning the glue would move and these pages could come apart. So we want to press, 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 and don't pull the paper until it is dry. When it is dry, it is back more like a solid, meaning it won't touch, I mean, it won't move, it'll be strong. Okay, open it. One more time, this is our last piece of paper. Take your glue, put the glue in the middle. See, it's a liquid, it moves down the page and then press your piece of paper into the middle and fold your book around it. Now, it's easier to match the corners if you do it that way, as opposed to going on top. So see if your corners are all connecting, they're all one straight line, one straight line, everything is nice and neat, good. Put it down one more time and press on the fold. Now yours is gonna be a little bit smaller than mine. Nice work. And we're gonna give it one little second to dry. While we let it dry for a moment, 
I want you to, you to start thinking about that balloon that we talked about earlier in class. The balloon that doesn't look like a lot. It's kind of like a circle, right? And then we put helium inside the balloon and the balloon comes out like that and it gets bigger and bigger and then it floats away. We're going to draw a balloon on our page. So make sure you have a pencil and get some colors. One color for the balloon, okay? We've changed a piece of paper. We've changed the property of that piece of paper into a book. Good job. With your pencil, write your name on the bottom. I'm going to write Miss Emmeline. You write your name right there. And let's put a line because at the end of drawing, I want you to actually, you're gonna draw one thing with me, but you can fill the book as much as you want. You can do background colors, foreground colors. This is your art project. And when you're done with the book, I want you to give it a title. It can be states of matter. It can be the balloon. It can be the balloon floats away, whatever you want to name it. And we're just gonna leave the front empty for a second, okay? Let's imagine, let's open up the first page of the book and imagine if we tried to change a solid circle by putting helium inside, okay? And we can imagine over one, two, three, four, five, six, seven pages if you want to. You can fill up this entire book with a story about a circle turning into a balloon and floating away into the sky. You could add birds and clouds, all kinds of things. But for now, let's pick our one color and let's start with the balloon when it has no gas. The balloon is just a solid. He's a circle and he's sitting right here. Can you draw a circle and color in? What color is your circle? He's not a balloon yet, he's just a circle. It's just a circle because we don't have that gas that makes it go, that makes it float. What is the gas? Helium is the gas that makes it float. Good, great. Now, if you wanna take a lot of time and add in a lot of pictures, you can. I'm just gonna do an example for the next part and I'm gonna start showing you what your story can become. Now, what if somebody walked up to this circle and started putting helium in it? So let's create a circle that's a little bit, just a little bit more of an oval, and let's give it a string to hold on to, okay? The balloon's not quite filled up yet, but we want it to look a little bit, to resemble a little bit more like a balloon. So make your circle. And this time, let's put a string on that balloon. We can see the string now. Great. Okay, next page, we're gonna make this balloon fill, we're gonna fill it with helium. So he's gonna start rising, but he's not gone yet. This is like a flip book, it's like a little animation. So your balloon should look more like a balloon, less like a circle, and he's starting to rise up the page, okay? Color this in. Do you see where our story's going? So we have filled the circle, we filled the balloon with gas, the matter, gas into a solid, and now we have a balloon that wants to float away. All right, here we are. Let's make that balloon float higher and higher. Let's give a nice big balloon floating right at the top with its tail hanging down, string hanging down. There's our balloon. And you can take as much time as you need and once again, you can add as much detail as you want in this book that we just created. 
Great job. Let's go to the next page. The balloon, oh, he's got three more. The balloon's up higher. Can we make him look a little bit farther away? We can do that by making our circle a little bit smaller and our tail a little bit shorter, okay? Color in your balloon. Great job. Let's continue to tell the story of our balloon. He is going high, high into the sky. Make your balloon smaller and your tail even smaller. The string of the balloon, smaller, smaller still. And as small as we think, right at the top corner, floating away, the balloon's floating away. And finish it with the tail. I keep saying tail like it's a kite, but actually string like you would hold it like a balloon. Good. Okay, let's flip through. You will have a title and you can do foreground, background, color it all. I'd love to see what you come up with. There's our circle. There's our little balloon. Getting bigger with helium. Starting to feel strong and float with helium. And away he floats. And away it goes. And away it goes. All right. Good work. All right, second grade. Thank you for joining me in today's science lesson about matter and the states of matter. Can you think of all three now? Easily. And what kinds of things fit into those categories as well as how they can change. We took our piece of paper and we made our book and I would love to see you decorate this whole book. I challenge you to give it a title and to think about the backgrounds and how you could add to it to not only give it more um, color, but give it a, more of a story. Right now it's a pretty basic story and can you take all of your art skills and give it more of a story? I would love to see what you can create. And I look forward to seeing you next week once again. My name is Miss Emily. Thank you for joining me in today's class. Keep making art.